Welcome to King Says So, a channel that advocates for one Africa, one land, one Africa, one language, one Africa, one currency, one Africa, one army. I wish to witness Africans all around the world united as one in our lifetime. Enjoy. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy King King053, Mr. Easy Imale Nengi Nengi, and we're back at it again with another one. Uh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I would like to send all my greetings to everyone watching from all around the world. Guys, I appreciate you. I appreciate the African spirit. I, I appreciate the African love that you guys are showing on the comment session. And we can't forget our haters also. Haters, it's important for you guys to watch and comment and give us your negative energy. We appreciate the views also. It's important so that uh, we get our channel to be out there. Now, today I'm speaking about something that is unusual as to the usual topics that we speak about. Here we have a very respect, respectable man or respected man in South Africa by the name of the former Chief Justice Mohueng Mohueng. Don't know why we're saying his surname twice. Probably his name is his surname. You do, you do get um, that type of situations now and then in South Africa. So I'm saying to you guys, Mohueng Mohueng has come out in a church in Bloemfontein to say something that is um extraordinary uh, to say the least and he says god told him in three occasions that he's going to be president now you you don't have to take my word for it um let's quickly listen from the horse's mouth so to say what the former chief justice said now, retired Chief Justice Mkhweng Mkhweng says he'll be president of South Africa one day. And this, he says, will happen without him contesting for that position. Mkhweng told a church audience in Bloemfontein on Friday night that God has told him three times that he intends to make him president. Ian says Moloko Moloto got an understanding from him on this. He said he doesn't want it to happen through an electoral process. He doesn't want me to join a political party. He doesn't want me to form any political party. It is going to be miraculous. And I pause there to remind people that it looked like a foolish thing for me to make myself available for the position of judge of the Constitutional Court. There was mockery all over the media that I was just a lay preacher who knew nothing about the law. And it got worse after my nomination and appointment for the position of Chief Justice. I was projected as this idiot, this uh, lapdog of President Zuma who knew the Bible and knew nothing about uh, the law. And as it turned out, they all ate humble pie yeah. because I had the full backing of the almighty God. All right. I'm sure a lot of South Africans would agree that you you did a good job as uh, the head of the judiciary in this country. But at this point in time, the interest is whether you will throw your lot to stand for election as president. And as you're saying, it's not going to happen. How then, if God wants you, doesn't want you to, to be president if that were to be the case through a political process. I mean, you would know that in this country, the president is elected by mens members of parliament, and how then would it happen that you would be president if that is not going to be the process? Well, I can't project myself into the mind, mind of the almighty God. It's still a miracle that I became chief justice. Um, and who said, I'm just there just to, to keep you thinking. Who said that this same almighty God cannot move political parties, given how many they are, at some stage when they, they have to elect the president, the National Assembly has to elect the president, and there's a stalemate. They can't just agree on who of the politicians should take over. Who said God can't touch them and say, there is a man who is not in any political structure. Go to that man, approach him, and... Um, let him take a seat, somebody vacate a seat, let him come in and vote him into the position of prayer. Who said it can't happen? So you in a nutshell, you have to raise your fist out there and say, elect me, elect. It's going to be miraculous. So in a nutshell, you still believe that you might miraculously become the number one citizen of this country? I'm not, going, I'm not saying might. It's unstoppable. 
it's inevitable. I don't know when, but God will surely do it and you must come and interview me and i'll say you see how great this god is it sounds crazy it sounds nonsensical but i have seen how unlimited the power of this god is you'll be shocked everybody will you will be president of south africa i am going to be president of this country at the appointed time i don't know when it may even be next month you never know where this god wow Wow. And just to put everything in content, because some of you might be saying, oh, who's, who's, who's Chief Justice Mukhweng Mukhweng? Former Chief Justice Mukhweng Mukhweng. Well, Mukhweng Mukhweng is, um, okay, let's start with this, um, uh, he, he, where he comes from. He comes from KZN. Um, he was born in 1961, meaning he's 63 years old. And, uh, <clears throat> on the, on the 14th of January, uh, 61, 62 years old, and um, and um, the first president to appoint Mukwege Mukwege was the the former president, uh, the great Nelson Mandela. He appointed him as the judge of um, what did he appoint him of? The judge of Northwest, uh, judge of Northwest High Court. He was the judge there, and this was back back in the days in 1997. Uh, Nelson Mandela appointed him and then we've got he was then appointed by the former great president also Thabo Mbeki and uh, Thabo Mbeki appointed him uh, as the excuse me as the judge president of the Northwest High Court okay so Mandela appointed him as the judge of Northwest and uh, Thabo Mbeki then appointed him as the judge president of Northwest High Court. And then later on, we all know that he was appointed by uh, Jacob Zuma as the Chief Justice uh, in, uh, when was it? In 2011, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, in 2011, the 8th of September. So yes, this, this is a guy that is very well respected in South Africa. Very well spoken. He does not mix around his words. He was one of those people who said he does not want to take the vaccine. Why is it that people are not allowed to um, investigate these vaccines that are coming into South Africa when presidents were lying? I mean, you remember the, that, that clip that uh, Cyril had where he was acting as if he's taking the, the, the vaccine and then it shows clearly the syringe was empty. I'll see if I can get that clip. Very funny clip at that time. When I saw that clip, I saw to myself, I'm not taking this vaccine. I was ready to get fired. Hey, we are risking with our, our livelihoods. Eh? I was ready to get fired. I was like, no, I'm not getting, I'm not getting any vaccines. And those who took the vaccines, how are you feeling today? That they, this COVID-19 thing just died. They turned to, to, to get us a new variant now. We don't know what's going to happen. But anyway, I'm saying to you guys, Chief Justice Mokhen Mokhen, very respectful guy, the respected guy. Why do I keep on saying respectful? So when it comes to spirituality and God and everything, in this channel, I try to, to, to keep to pan-Africanist, pan-Africanism, politics, and just good morals. But we can't speak about everything and just live religion out of the way that's why i wanted you guys to vote if you wanted me to 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 dive into some re religious topics because i i told you guys i'm very well knowledge when it comes to religion whether it's been rastafarian african spirituality whether it's been islam or 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 you know the study of the quran i've been in debates where i've been called uh to to come and debate with my uh, uh, uh my muslim friends and all of that so when it comes to christianity i have studied in depth guys i want to speak about that but i, I was thinking maybe do a separate channel and leave this channel to, to politics you guys tell me i can mix everything and and do it right here but anyway god spoke to him and said listen i'm going to make you a president but not through the ballot paper not through a political party it's going to be in a miraculous way now even though the appointment of uh, Chief Justice Mukwege Mukwege was a miraculous one when you look at the people who were there and how he came about to be appointed there. 
it, it, it was miraculous in a process way. You understand? He was interviewed. Um, people were there. There were some votes. He, he came out top from the interview people. The interview panel liked him. So it was not miraculous as if they went to go uh, snatch him somewhere in the street and make him chief justice. No, he went through the process. Now, let's act as if the miracle of him being president will happen. What does that mean? It will mean that next year the elections will be contested and then the outcome will be challenged. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm just, hypothetically speaking, elections elected next uh, elections will happen. The outcome be elect uh, be challenged, and then a, a, a mini war in South Africa breaks through through the EFF because the EFF is the only party that can cause chaos in, in in South Africa. The EFF causes so much chaos that Parliament can't run. The police uh, the police are killing and shooting everyone, and then. There comes a time where they say, listen, okay, because we political parties can't find a neutral ground. Let us find someone uh, who can be an interim president up until the next elections. You guys understand what I'm saying? For me, that is the only situation I can see um, Mokhing Mokhing being called back because if we look at the South African people, South African people with good stature, you know, are respected by everyone. Mokhing Mokhing is respected throughout their race uh, like every, excuse me, everyone respects this man. Every, nobody said a bad word about this man. You understand? Uh, the only thing they could say was that he's stubborn. In fact, there was a time where he was offered 600 million. Listen, you don't have to take it from me. Let's listen to what Mokhreng Mokhreng said. You spoke last week about an approach, maybe even an offer of 600 million rand, which you turned down. What details can you give us around that? I think it's enough to say I wasn't approached directly. There was a, a middle person that I respect highly, that I believe was coming to me innocently, and that's that's what makes it a bit uh, challenging for me to disclose the details. It's enough to say it was an American uh, billionaire who, who made an offer through a particular structure. And what was the offer? Sorry, to what? modernize the courts. The, the, the offer as it was conveyed to me was, we've heard you say you need you to take 600 million rands to modernize the courts. We're willing to give you whatever amount we want. We won't be involved in whatever tender processes are, 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 are to be embarked upon. You deal with the money as you please. Somebody listening to that would say, that sounds like philanthropy. That sounds sure. like benevolence. Sure. Why would you see it as capture? Because you said that's how capture begins and that's why you turned it down. Why don't they go to the state, to treasury? and give money there why should i be approached directly why should it even be a secret approach it should be out in the open they know structures that they release money to us that's where they must go but if you go come straight to me it becomes very suspicious you So Mukweng Mukweng refusing these millions of rent from this billionaire from, from uh, the U.S. shows that he's a man of in uh, integrity, man of big dignity, man that um, does not fall for anything. So I, I'm very happy that um, he said no to those type of deals because it would have compromised us as South Africans and the justice system. It was going to be captured. So, when it comes to, because this is a prophecy that Mokweng Mokweng has just made. When it comes to prophecy, God usually sh shows you the outcome and leaves the in-between um, as a mystery. 
if you understand what I'm saying. If you're a Christian, you know, if, even if you are not a Christian uh, or a, a spiritual person, sometimes you would dream and see an outcome, but you don't know how you got to it. That is how spirituality works. And now he's saying three times God showed him that he will be president or God told him that he will be president. It's a, it's going to be a difficult ask. It takes a lot amount, a, a month's uh, levels of faith. It's not this little faith that you and I have to come out on national television and say, listen, before I die, I will be president of this country. Because remember, should that prophecy not be fulfilled? Is my mic on, guys? Yes, it is. It should that prophecy not be, fu be fulfilled? Then in your funeral, your God will be mocked. That is the danger of saying things that God has told you into the public. It takes big faith to say what that man said. Now you come back to me, say, King, do you think it's going to happen? I told you, I'm not here to disrespect anyone's religious beliefs. I'm not here to question them. So I'm going to say the possibility of it happening, yes, it is. The likeliness of it happening, uh, of it happening uh, are very high uh, or, or are very low. The likeness of it happening is, like I said, only in a situation where South Africa turns into an ungovernable country where two or three political parties are fighting, people are dying, and for the interim, we need a, a president. That is the only way I can see them calling a former judge, because judges run this country, to be honest. Judges run this country. Zondo is the most powerful man in South Africa right now. The chief justice is always the most powerful man in South Africa, more powerful than the public protector. So for me, yes, I can see it happening, uh, but will it happen? It's, it's another issue. You guys go on the comment section and tell me what do you think. Do you, do you think this is a, uh, something that can possibly happen? Hmm. Very interesting, guys. Very interesting outcomes. I was I wanted to do other videos. Um, probably you guys will get them tonight, tomorrow, and tomorrow afternoon. But I wanted to jump in on this one because for me it's very interesting. If you are new on the channel, please consider subscribing, guys. We need to hit seven thousand subscribers before the end of this coming week, and we need to hit ten thousand subscribers by the end of this year. So we need those. Uh, um, 3,000 subscribers within the next three months. I believe we can do it. Please, if you haven't subscribed yet, I will appreciate it if you can, if you subscribe if you can subscribe if you like the content. Later on, when you don't like the the content, you can obviously unsubscribe. Nobody's holding a gun to nobody's head. For those who have subscribed, thank you so much. I appreciate your likes, your comments on the comment session. I, I look, guys, when you comment, you make my day. I love responding to comments. You, you just make my day. So thank you so much for you guys sharing the thoughts. You guys, some of you are, are educating me so much because iron sharpens iron. I'm not a person who presents, who presents himself as an all-knowing uh, person. Uh, I learn as, as things appear to me. Thank you, guys. Until we meet next time, don't forget to pray. And just know that your boy, King053, Mr. Easy Imali Neng Neng, salutes you.